Hey, welcome back Design Squad. And in this video, I'm gonna cover the special request from Twitter. One of the viewers, Rahul, requested, how do I do a multi-level drop-down menu like such? And he gave me a simple example. However, I would be really careful if implementing solutions like this because the users are not really aware of what's going to happen next. So the pattern is really questionable. I would use or test it. But just to demonstrate that, you know, in the wild, what I found pretty good is Aputure, which is basically um, video light maker. So let's say if you would be a YouTuber or you would be video production person, let's say you would know about this brand because it's like a really high end lights for video production. And in their case, you know, if you go to products, you would have three different uh, categories. And then you could pick one out of the item, you know, you could pick one of the items, let's say this one, and then it would take you to a page. So this is really good, an example of how to do it right, because you have a first of all category and it's really clear, uh, especially for people who are into this, because it's really high end, it's really elite, really pro. It's, you know, it's way beyond my level of video production, let's say, or anyone else. It's, it's proper pros who pay thousands upon thousands so we know exactly what we're looking for and we know the series like lightstorm amaran modifiers yada yeah i have no idea what that means but we definitely do and i can guarantee that because it's really intuitive so why not try to do something like this i think we can and i think you should rahul you should aim to do something like this where you have a really simple you know stage i would e wouldn't even go then three levels here we went you know one two levels deep that's that's why it's good because if you would go deeper lose the users exploring it and might, they might lose interest or they might get lost because there is a lot of you know cross-linking so let's go ahead and create something like this in action and so you can actually implement on your own boom and so imagine that this is my mock-up. This is what I want to produce. You know, I'm gonna basically mouse over, over product. It's gonna drop down. And then I'm gonna select one of the items here and then I'm gonna have more options to choose. It's a carbon copy of the Aputure website because it's quite good. And I think we can almost replicate the same behavior in this one. And it might give you ideas of how to do so on other instances, if you wish. Now, the next thing to do is to just go ahead and add some, you know, behavior to it, which is quite easy. So I'm going to convert these bad boys to dynamic panels. For example, this is going to be one dynamic panel, uh, which I'm going to call menu drop down, let's say. And the second bit is going to be a second dynamic panel which I'm gonna call, let's say, submenu drop down. Or wait, what was menu drop down, submenu drop down, perfect. So it's in the same similar convention. However, this is gonna have just one state. It's either visible or not. This is gonna have several states because it's gonna be a state for each of these, right? So let's say this is gonna be my state one, which is, let's say, it's gonna be actual library kit. And then I'm going to make a couple of copies. Let's say one is for wireframe kit, which is the first item. And then I'm going to make another, which is visual design system. So it, it corresponds to those items before, but need to just assess the order of it. So the first one is wireframe kit. And here I might just have two items instead of three, just resize like this. And, you know, you could also replace the icons. I won't just for the demo sake. Um, in visual design systems, maybe it's just one item. And so we have, you know, two items for wireframe kit, kit actual library free, and then one for visual designs. And so next, what we would want to do is just simply hide these. I'm just gonna go ahead and just click that hidden icon, hidden icon again. And now we're just gonna float around next to that, our menu. I would want to also, let's say, when I mouse over, over products to have this type of indicator. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just copy it. You can do any sort of mouse over effect you wish. I think that looks pretty good for me at least, but I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this easier. First and foremost, make it a dynamic panel. Again, you can escape dynamic panels. I'm gonna call this product 
menu item, let's say. And it's going to have two states. Uh, one is going to be default, which you see now apart from that thing. And another one is going to be hour state. And in the hour state, we're just going to invert the, the image vertically. So it, it's basically it indicates that now something is open and we can close it down. And this is going to be here. But in a default, we don't really have that. And so basically an idea is if a user mouse is over, we switch it to that and then we show the menu. And let me show you how it's done. So we, I'm gonna use hotspot for this so we can encapsulate both of those uh, items, Chevron as well as the text. And on the interaction, I'm gonna add new interaction, on click, set panel state, I'm gonna select product menu item and then set it to Hower, the one we made. Uh, immediate so we don't have to do anything else and then I'm gonna just copy that actually copy that hotspot with that action into the next state paste it in here boom and now I made a switch now the next thing to do is just show that bit whenever I'm doing that so I'm gonna add another action to our existing hotspot and say show or hide menu drop down it's this yellow bit and then I'm going to say, let's say slide down in half a second or so. And then I'm going to probably hide on the other one where we have a switch right here. As you can see, a copy paste, it just hide slide up and then it drop down. As you can see, it automatically inverts. It's great. Actually, it's smart. And so if we test it out, you're going to see that we gradually build that logic, gradually build that prototype and that product. And that's amazing. That's how you should be doing it in Axure. So let's say a click, boom, shows me a menu. If I click out, it just disappears. Amazing. So we we are walking slowly, but we're walking forward in baby steps. And so next thing is almost independent. We need to make these bad boys to open this section for us. So I'm gonna drag in three hotspots, let's say. And then I'm actually also gonna borrow that line and we need it as an indicator in this uh, dynamic panel too. So it's, let's say like this maybe. So the mouse over item is gonna have that bit. Also, we can maybe add a background too for a good measure and make it a bigger dynamic panel like so. So it's going to be, let's say, like this. Maybe I'm just going to resize it a little bit. Group those items into dynamic panel and then set it underneath. And so whenever I mouse over, over this, we can show that item and then we can move it to a different location. So let's say again, it, it would be good to note down the different location of where it could appear. So let's see, this is the first location and an X coordinate is zero, Y coordinate is 16, as you can see above. And if I place it down below a little bit like so, I would keep X still zero, and Y 59. And then if I go a bit lower, bam, bam, bam like so. so let's say x0 and 105 boom and then i can just make it invisible like this and increase my hotspots which are now overlapping it like so and what's gonna happen now is i'm gonna tell it to on interaction let's say new interaction on mouse enter not a click anymore because we don't have a chevron. I'm going to say show um, and we haven't named it. Ooh, amateur mistake. I'm going to name it sub no actually menu active item, right? Don't forget to name it. That's a big mistake. And as you can see, I selected the right one. So I'm going to show it, but I also going to move it to that position I noted down. So I'm gonna say menu active item two coordinate zero and it was 16. And then actually we need to add a new interaction saying what happens if you mouse out. And here I can actually paste those same events but just invert it. So height and we don't need to move it. It's like this. And now I can just copy it and paste it on another hotspot like so. 
So we show it again and then we move it to slightly lower position, which is Y59, which I noted down. And then we hide it, that's perfect. And then the same for the last one. So we are gonna move it to 105. Kaboom! That should work and should do the trick. Let's see if that works. So I click on it and boom. As you can see, we created now a mouse over effect for our menu. Pretty neat. So what we're gonna do now is gonna go one by one and on mouse enter also insert an action. And let's say, we first gonna show the sub sub menu drop down. Yes, sub menu drop down, and we can animate it to the let's say to the right, uh, to slide into the right in 400. And if I mouse out, we can either hide it immediately, which is probably a good idea. It might be glitch a little bit, but let's try it out. Hide it, and I'm just gonna copy the same behavior to all of these like that as you can see you don't have to rewrite the same line you can just copy it boom and then boom and let's see if that actually does the trick boom as you can see it keeps opening up the different panel but it doesn't change anything so what i'm gonna do next is i'm gonna add a new action and just say set panel state and since we know we're over wireframe kit we can then select sub menu drop down and wireframe kit is automatically selected for us. Great. And then we can do the same. I'm just copying pasting. We're going to select actual library and then for visual design, going to select visual design. As you can see, I flipped through a hotspots and just added a snippet, uh, which I copy pasted. Let's see if that works. Boom, 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 boom. It's a little bit of a glitch because chances are maybe you wouldn't want to hide it. Maybe you want to keep it open, but it's really up to you to do that. So perhaps you wouldn't want to, let's say, necessarily show hide the menu drop down immediately. Maybe you show hide it when you hide that. Like there are ways to sort this out and it's not that difficult. I think this is kind of like what you're looking for. And I think it's going to give you ideas of how to do different menus and different impactful menus. Just don't keep it quite simple, guide your users, but don't do it like a never ending trail of multiple levels. Two, three levels, not deeper. And I think you should be fine again, user tested. So I hope this video was useful. If so, smash that like button, leave a comment down below, subscribe to this channel. You know, you know the drill by now. And as per usual, stay tuned for more material and I'll see you next time.